right everyone, hope you're well. So, we're going to be doing something slightly different than normal. What we're going to be making today is what I'm calling many berry wine. Because, well, it contains many berries. <laughs> All different types. Now, to be exact, I popped down to Aldi. Yeah, I like how they wrote on here. And I picked up a kilo of the black forest fruit. And I also picked up another kilo of the summer fruit berries. Looking pretty cool. Now when you put both of these together, there are going to be many different berries. So for those people that don't know what this is, there is raspberries, blackberries, black currants and red currants, and these lovely summer fruits. Now in the black forest, fruit selection, it is a mix of blackberries, cherries, grapes, and black currants. It sounds pretty good. Now there is going to be a bit of a power struggle to kind of uh, see which is the dominant flavor, but you can pick up a kilo of this stuff. It's like £2.39, so we're going to call it a fiver for two kilos of mixed fruit. Now I am a Puritan when it comes to making fruit wines. I, I really enjoy a single fruit wine. I can't help myself, but there is nothing that stops you from going, oh, I'll have a bit of that, I'll have a bit of that, I'll put them together. You can make some fantastic concoctions that way. So again, we're going to be making a simplish wine. We're not going to be going down using the tannins and things like that. There's nothing wrong with doing that but they are more for a dry aged wine and I always like quick drinking sweeter wine. This already contains grapes so it will have, in theory, more of a wine edge to it. That is my hope. I don't know for sure, but we're gonna find out. So um, yeah, let's, let's do this. So the first step that we're gonna have to do is go through the tedious part, which is sterilizing. Now, as you know, I like sterilizing on the cheap. Use whichever brand of sterilizing or sanitizing agent that you want. My personal preference, cheap as chips, thin bleach from Tesco, and some dish soap. You can't go wrong with it, because, well, it sterilizes. Never had a failure when using this method. So uh, I guess it works. Though it is a bit annoying, because uh, obviously someone in Tesco's has found out what we're using the bleach for, because it's gone up in price from 28p to uh, 40p, so somewhere there's a 50% increase for the same stuff. Oh well, it's still the cheapest way to sterilize pretty much anything. Now I do have my brew bucket, because well, we're doing an on-the-pope fermentation, and well, buckets beat demijohns when you're using pulp. Also, it's a lot easier and it's a lot quicker. You don't have to do the steeping and the stirring for days on ends before you start fermenting. But you can do it that way if you want. It's up to you. So, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna finish sterilizing everything, then we're gonna begin. So everything that I'm going to be using has been sterilized and wiped down and rinsed. So uh, just so you know, you've got to rinse bleach. So my brew bucket that I'm going to be using smells fresh, but not bleachy. You don't want it to smell of bleach, it's just supposed to smell fresh. Just so you know. So I'm going to get my two kilos of fruit and we're going to sterilize the outside of the fruit because we're the outside of the fruit has contact with wild yeast and God knows what. Mmm, mmm, my hands are no longer sterile. But they do taste good, so yeah, why not? So let's add this in to our bucket. It is that easy. Ooh, this is gonna be good. Now we're also gonna add in both of these bad boys, otherwise it's not a many berry wine. Oh, that one smells good. I like the cherries. Anyway, in they go. Looking good. 
So I have boiled my kettle. Now I use this because one, it's a lot quicker because it's going to thaw the fruit out and also cool the water down and it's going to kill off any wild yeast without having to use Camden tablets. Because if we don't have to use them, why use them? So I've got two liters approximately because kettles are kind of inaccurate as we found out. And it's going to go in. So the boiling water has been added in. So in theory, everything that is in and on the fruit should be killed off by now. So even though there was a cutscene, I'd like to point out I have re-washed my hands because um, I don't have a stick blender anymore and my potato masher is not a very good one. So I'm gonna be using my hands. Uh, sacrilege, but they are as clean as they're gonna get. So um, that's what I'm gonna use. It's easy. So in goes the hand, oh yes. And I'm just going to squish the fruit because we need the fruit to be pulped. Now, even though it was boiling, uh, this fruit was mainly frozen, so it is cold to the touch now, which makes everything a lot easier. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna squidge this fruit. Going old school, going French, except I'm not using my feet. I could use my feet. But I'm not going to. Adds that cheesy twang. Mmm. I spent a couple of minutes just pulping this down by hand. If I had a stick blender, this would take a couple of seconds, but I didn't, so I did it by hand. If you have a food blender, you can use that too. Just put them in there first with some water, blend it down, jobs are good. And, but again, I don't have that, so I did it by hand. Let's see what this jus tastes like. So I have scorched a spoon to keep it sterile, and I just want a little bit of the jus because, well, it is really red and it does stain. So, cheers. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. It has currently acids. I can taste sort of the sour notes from the raspberries, the red currants, and the black currants. But I'm not getting a lot of flavor from the grape or the blackberries or the cherries. I'm not getting those flavors, but this has had no sugar added to it. So as you know, different fruits need a different amount of sugar to bring out those flavors. So this is gonna be quite fun because in theory, once this is finished brewing, we could make different wines that will have different flavors prominent depending on how much sweetness we add, if any at all. It's good to know. So I have got myself a kilo of sugar because well, I like a kilo of sugar. I'm not gonna be working out how much fruit is inside here and then working out the sugar content, because well, it's, it's minimal. It's not gonna be that much. I had a quick look at the back of the packet and for the entire two kilos of fruit that we added in here, there is 150 grams of sugar. So per liter, you divide it by five, because that's how many we're making. And that is 30 grams of sugar that we've got to adjust for, and uh, we just don't do that. So I've got a kilo of sugar, we know it's gonna be 11%-ish. Good enough, well within the yeast tolerance. So in goes a kilo of sugar. Oh yes, lovingly done. And the cool thing about adding sugar is it changes the density so all the fruit rises to the top. Useless fact. So uh, yeah, in goes the sugar. Lovingly done. In the bin. Now to make it easier to stir in our sugar, I have scorched a wooden spoon, because uh, people say you can't use wooden spoons. Of course you can. Just don't bleach them. It's like with corks. You boil corks, you don't sterilize corks with bleach and stuff. It just, it just doesn't work. Useless fact. So I've got another 
liter of boiling water. This is just going to make the sugar dissolve easier. So in it goes. And now let's stir the bejesus out of it. So I've been stirring this for a minute or so and to be fair I think it's pretty much all dissolved. I'm not getting that greedy texture that you get with sugar grains. So we must be good. So now we just need to top this up and add in the things that we need to add in. So I have got another two liters of water kind of been keeping on top of it. So we added in two liters, added in another liter. Here's my other two liters ish. So that makes us about five liters approximately, which is exactly what we like to definitely get our six bottles of tasty berry wine. So in she goes. Looking good. Now to this, we're going to need some yeast nutrient because we want a good solid clean ferment. I have a scorched teaspoon. It's a lot easier just to pour boiling water over a teaspoon because uh, it dries. So you end up with a dry teaspoon. It's just a good way to go. Now, I did actually get a comment about, that's not a teaspoon. It doesn't matter. Ish. If you use a teaspoon, you can use exactly your five milliliters, a recommended amount, or about this. It's not going to harm. It's not. So in it goes. Now, usually you would be adding in pectolase, but this is a red berry wine for me. I'm not going to be adding in pectolase. Now you could make the argument that it releases more fruit flavors, but we're brewing on the pulp. You can't really get much more flavor than that. You could argue that it's not going to be clear, but this is a red wine. Red wines usually don't have pectolase added to them. And I, I'm going to stand by that because it sounds pretty cool. So let's just stir this all up and then we're going to take a hydrometer reading. So I've mixed up the yeast nutrient and the water and the sugar. It should all be fairly standardized with my wooden spoon. The great thing about doing that is it also aerates it just enough. You don't need to go nutty with aeration. Yeast after all grew up or evolved in an oxygen deprived atmosphere. So it, it can work either way. Anyway, so I've got my hydrometer, which I have sterilized. and I just keep in uh, fresh water because it stands up and doesn't fall over. Very easy. So let's just dump it in the bucket and let's see what we get. Place your bets. Do, 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 do. Right. So according to this hydrometer, having a quick look, it is right at 11 and a half percent. Terrible, terrible, I know. So that works out as 1.072. Now this is if it ferments to dryness. Uh, people say comments all the time like, that's not 11 and a half percent, it's 10 percent. And it's like, always read the hydrometer as it is, not how you expect it to be. Then you adjust it on the second reading and that gives you an accurate reading. Never guess. Uh, this should ferment to almost dryness. That is 990, not one. Just so you know. Yeah, just, just put it out there. So there goes my lovely mixed berry tastiness. So the yeast I'm going to be using is something slightly different. Usually I'd be using a universal wine yeast, but I fancy being all fancy. So instead I picked up some Gervin yeast, it and it is there. Uh, can't speak. So I picked up some different yeast. This is called robust wine yeast, otherwise known by any other brand as a burgundy wine yeast. It is a full bodied yeast meant for red or white wines, quick start, l quick ferment and low foam. Sure. So all we've got to do is sprinkle some on top. I do get asked the question quite a lot, like, oh, I've seen that you only add a little bit in, um, and I added quite a lot. Is that too much? Not at all. 
<laughs> the only reason I do this is for pure laziness. You can add in less yeast if you know it's sterile. And using less yeast means you don't get that rapid explosion of uh, activity. It's sort of yeah, gets up to a stage and then stays constant. It's just, for me, it's easier. I don't have to worry about it blowing up and puking everywhere as a general rule. So uh, that being said, let's just chuck this stuff in here. Little sprinkle. Woo. That will do. So for those people that want the official amount, one of these sachets weighs five grams and uh, you use one gram per gallon. That's the official amount. I probably use about a quarter of a gram or a tenth of a gram, a lot less. And that's just pretty much done. All we've got to do is place the lid on top and close it on three sides. Leave one side open so the gas can escape and the bugs can't get in. That's just done. We're finished. We have created many berry wine. Now we don't need to keep opening this every day and stirring it because, well, the more steps you add into your winemaking, that is more chance that something's going to go wrong. What will happen is the yeast will start up, it will create that lovely CO2 atmosphere. Not a lot grows in a CO2 rich atmosphere, so um, you're pretty much fine. Even mother of vinegar, if it happened, wouldn't get cultured in here until you gave it oxygen. So pretty much good to go. So we're just going to leave this to one side. And we're going to come back in one month's time and we're going to see if we've made something superb or something that's going to feed the toilet. We don't know. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well, you know, subscribe and comment and like and share and do all those things that people on YouTube do. Carry on humbering guys. See you later.